Let's read uh, Genesis 16 from verse 1. Are you there? He says, Now Sarai, Abraham's wife, had not borne him any children. And she had an Egyptian maid whose name was Aga. Look at the verse. So Sarai said to Abraham, See here, the Lord has prevented me from bearing children. I'm asking you to go in to my maid. And then perhaps I will obtain children by her. And Abraham listened to Sarai and did as she said. After Abraham had lived in the land of Canaan ten years, Abraham's wife Sarai took Hagar the Egyptians and gave her to her husband Abraham to be his wife. He went in to Hagar and she conceived. And when she has realized that she had conceived, she looked with contempt on a mistress. Because, if you can see that then, verse 5, Then Sarai said to Abraham, May the wrong done to me be upon you. I gave my maid into your arms, and when she realized that she had conceived, I was despised and looked on with disrespect. May the Lord judge between you and me. Look at verse 6. But Abraham said to Sarai, Look, your maid is entirely in your hands and subject to your authority. Do as you please with her. So Sarai treated her harshly and humiliated her, and Hagar fled from her. Verse 7, but the angel of the Lord found her by a spring of water in the wilderness on the road to Shur. And he said, Agai, Agar, Sarai maid, where did you come from? Where are you going? And she said, I'm running away from my mistress, Sarai. And the angel of the Lord said to her, go back to your mistress and submit humbly to her authority. Then the angel of the Lord said to her, I will greatly multiply your descendants so that there will be too many to count. And the angel of the Lord continued, Behold, you are with child, and you'll bear a son, and you shall name him Ishmael, means God hears. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I want to share with you just a little message that I read here. I was seeing that when we read about Sarai, she was like a person who forgot what God has promised. If you can read there, you will see that Sarai with, with her husband, they had, they had a wonderful promise in Genesis 12. But you could still carry on thinking because of all the efforts they've done on, on the road of getting a child. You can conclude that that was the best plan. Because she was already tired of shame. If you can read going down, you realize that everybody could still do that to maintain a marriage. I failed to have a child. Can you get someone to bring the child for me? That was, that was the plan of Sarai. But unfortunately, you could see when Hagar began to conceive, the problem came there. There is something that I want us to Concentrate on here. Before the angel of the Lord came, 
you could see what happened on verse 6 re tlo le mwantwe di aitseng molao verse 6 but abram said to sarai abram are o sarai is entirely in your hands ore mo shume di o wa ga o matsong a hao and subject to your authority do as you please and, uh, with her ape o ya ka taulo ya ga o dia ka mogo wena di o gatlao so sarai treated her harshly and humiliated her and haga fled from her sarai o ge a sanka mokokobetsa chaba a mo tswara ka matso a magwao you see what sarai did here a le ka le mwala bona se sarai a se direleng you will think that she was out of the way le tla bona re na se tsa tsweletseleng but if you learn going down here you will realize that the main message on verse 9 o tla le mo re molaitsa o feletseng o mo verse 9 the angel of the lord said to her go back to your mistress and submit humbly morongo wa morena re boela go mongao o ikokobetse tsa sebana se submit ikokobetse listen to this what we are reading here ntse re balang mo you could see that sarah sarai was try a way of making this lady to submit o tla le mo re sarai na nya ka tsela ya o dira re motho a kono ikokobetse when she tried to humiliate a le ka o mo swabisa when she tried to fight her a le ka o lwana le yena she tried harshly and a le ka ka tsela ye mpe was to put her where she belonged na mo isa mo a swanetse go ba teng but herself because she had right now mara yena ka o re nana le tukela what the husband was expecting from ya di ntotse mo nana di lebeletse go yena automatically she grew up and tried to show her colors o ra re yena to mo phagama to mo iponcho re yena botsoma so today i want to speak with you about submit le gona ke nya go bolela ka o ikokobetsa you know sometimes when we talk about submission na we tshe dingwa re bolela ka o ikokobetsa it's like we are telling people just to be stupid re bolela wa re botsa batho re bang ditaela but i want to tell you that submitting yourself to god ya go le botse re ikokobetsa go modimo is your way to be blessed kitsela ya ruto o shofana submission or submit o ikokobetsa just write it down mwala fase is what we need to talk about ke ntse re thoka go bolela ka yona so now here this lady tsona mo mosadio she got out of the road because of what she received o ela to mo tswa tseleng ka lebaka la ntwa ya mogetsheo she tried to think she is no longer a maid atomo tenahana o re yena a sama mushume a nya go bontsha o re kena e she was better than the mistress ka re na to a setse yena le ka o no fitisha mushume sometimes we forget who are we when we come na go tshe le ba lo re ha re fita ne re le ka mogwamang o ba re ne re le bo ma because of the opportunity you have been granted ka le ba kala menyeta e re ghwetsitseng a re fita what is the meaning of submission so don't ba ya go ikokobetsa e ra o reng is to understand authority go thaloganya re bona le taulo to understand authority is submission go thaloganya re bona le taulo ke gona o ikokobetsa when you understand the authorities a wena o kwishisha taulo tshe di le ngona you are inclined to submit o ra re wena o ta khona ge o ikokobetsa What is the reason why many people they don't submit? Kile ka le bakalang batho ba bantshe ba palwa o ikokobetsa. They defy authorities. Ba nyatsa taulo e leng ona. And they end up being not what they are supposed to be. Ba felletsa ba sing se ba tshontjo ba sona. Look at the message. Le bela mo laitsa. That she gave to the angel. O a o fila a filweng ke mo ke leng eloi. Was to make the angel to bring a curse to Sarai. Ne le o dira leng eloi le le roge Sarai and say you see how she treated me that's why i ran away wa bona ka mogwa na ntshora ka ona ke ka lebaka le o ke tshabile but the message here was mara mo laetsa go nne gore boela mara do what you were supposed to have done o ye o dire ka mogwa na o swantjo di ya ka ona tell her about go back boela mara and do o yo tira what you are supposed to do ka mogwa swantjo di ya ka ona we have got many reasons arna le mabaka mantshi why we are doing some wrong actions why are dia di ntotse dingwe tshe di mpe where as submission was supposed to be your ka mo go ikokobetsa ne le yona tsela ye nne re tshwetse ba ntshi ke say submit wo tsa go leng ga fa go ikokobetsa submit to god ikokobetsa go modimo and you will prosper ke ona o tate
I want to show you this verse. I mean that we are reading here when we are going down. Especially the second stand of verse 8. Verse 8. And she said, I'm running away from my mistress Sarai. And the angel of the Lord said to her, go back to your mistress. Submit, humbling to her authority. This was a great message. And then when she agreed to that, she was told that she would have a son. And then also this son will be called Ishmael. Do you know that if she didn't agree that? She could still lose the child. Now the child there was declared that it will be given birth. Out of submission. There is no complete of gestation period. Out of submission. You complete your gestation period. In other words, you give birth to something. Do you know that when the submission is complete? It bring forth to what you expected. Of you. So authority that is being checked on you. If you follow it with all your heart, there is no way when you are submitting to it that you won't produce something. Tell them you are about to produce something. Remember James 4 verse 7. It says submit to God and resist the devil. He will flee from you. You can't submit and you find that you don't have fear. When you submit, fear will come. You will fear sin. You will fear to do wrong. I don't know if you're hearing that. Submit to God. To God. And resist the devil. He will flee. In Romans 10 verse 3. Romans 10 3. You will find that always people that that verse, they always have a nature of producing their own righteousness. Their own submission. A person by nature justified himself. There are many things that people always tell themselves that they are on the right track. But on before God, they are not there. there. Some submissions are caused because of lack of knowledge. Sometimes you find you are wasting time when you are not supposed to waste time. Or you create your own righteousness. You know, sometimes when we create our own righteousness, we think it means one, two, three. We need to allow God to judge our any action. We do. If you can see there, you realize that any righteousness you do. It must be checked from the word of God. Because a man has got nature of producing his own righteousness. So if truly we need submission, let us not waste time on Reska. what is not of God. Let us not waste time on what man is developing. 
Remember what is of men will never last. But what is of God will stay forever. I just want us to read this verse. Together. If you read Hebrews 12 verse 7. By Hebrews 12 7. I just want us to read that verse together. Hebrews 12. By Hebrews 12. Verse 7. Can you verse read, that, read that verse? If you endure chastening, uh -huh. God deals with you as with sons. Yes. For what son is there whom a father does not chasten? Can you just read that in Amplified Bible? This one is New King James Version you are reading. Amplified. Yes, read in Amplified. Okay. Verse 7 says, You must submit to in brackets, correction for the purpose of discipline, God is dealing with you as with sons. For what son is there whom his father does not discipline? Look, look at that verse. Sometimes when you are a Christian, now we're getting on with Things won't work your way the way you expected. The that's where your submission is required. You cannot just wake up, you find everything is moving on. Well. So there's a discipline. Do you know that there's no one right before God? Everybody is working towards righteousness. So the moment when you are going, through that righteousness. Some people around you won't understand it. They will trouble So when you see that trouble, carry on with the discipline you are given. It is part of causing pain, but you are going there. You can face rejection, but you are going there. Like, but you are going there. Do you know that when you face tough times, when God allows it, is to call you closer. When God allows tough times in your life, is to call you closer. Listen, even the fathers of this world, when the discipline is because of love. So here the right of Hebrews is saying, submission, when you are facing it, there will be some challenges. But it's a discipline to you towards where God wants you to be. So don't worry about that discipline. You know, the Bible says in the last days, we will have children who disrespect parents. In other words, submission is going to be difficult. There will be too much knowledge that will affect many. And many people will appear like they know God. But lacking the necessary power. But submission is to bring discipline. And that discipline takes you to where the one who discipline you wants you to be. Whatever you face is very good for you. If you allow it and carry on doing what God wants you to do, you are bound to reach where God wants you to be. Can you see what you are facing now? It's good for your discipline. You were not supposed to be here today. If everything was perfect. So now you've been channeled by what you are facing. And I 
discipline channel you to your submission. Can you see now what you are facing? We are one as a Christian, you are about to seek God so that all will follow. Not some, all will follow. But you have to meet one, two, three. Thank God you are meeting one, two, three. You are able to sit down and listen to God when he speaks with you. You are able to derive something out of nothing. Why? Because you are a Christian who understands discipline. A Christian who understands discipline he happy when God discipline him. Because every discipline you get is a step forward to your destiny. Tell me about every discipline you get it's a step forward to your destiny. Sometimes we need to stop praying against what we are facing. We are facing. And we start to develop fellowship with him. Worshipping him. Not because you want something. Praying. Not because you are asking for something. Because there is nothing that he does not know. That you don't want. All the things you want. He knows them. All the things you don't want. He knows them. And he will provide. I say he will provide. Read Proverbs 16 verse 13. It says what in Amplified Mama. Commit your works to the Lord. Submit and trust them to him. And your plans will succeed. If you respond to his will and guidance. It is not easy. That verse, sometimes we read it all the time, but it's not easy verse. Read it, read it again, Mama. Commit your works to the Lord. Yeah. Submit and trust them to him. And your plans will succeed if you respond to his will and guidance. If you respond Our to his will and and guidance. Read it again, Mama. Just read it again. Commit, Commit your, your works to the Lord. Commit your works to the Lord. Submit and trust them to Him. Submit and trust them to Him. And your plans will succeed. And your plans from your mind will succeed. If you respond to His will. If you respond to His will. And His guidance. And His guidance. There are two things here. There's guidance of the Lord and His will. If truly I take all of mine, I give it to God. And say, God, you are the one who controls this. This is my place. This is what I'm thinking. Before I do this, guide me. Lead me. There is no way you fail. You know, I was learning what is submission. In 1 Peter 3, if, if you can read 1 Peter 3, verse 1, you will understand submission there. All right, let me just read for you. It says, in the same way, you wives... Be submissive to your own husband. Let me read in Amplified. It says, subordinate, not as inferior, but it's out of respect for the responsibilities entrusted to husbands and their accountability to God. And so partnering with them. Amen. So that even if some do not obey the word of God, they may be won over to Christ without discussion by godly lives of their wives. Can you see that verse there? That verse shows that a wife, she's there to do whatever the husband says. 
Can you see the verse? I understand why submission is mentioned there. Why the wife submit to the husband? I'll tell you, you see what wives do. The real wives who are intelligent, they do this. They don't argue with their husbands. Even when they are seeing something, they show them with respect. You know, a wife who is not wise, when a husband says one, she say two. So a person here who was personified as a person need to be submitting. So is a wife. A wife, here. A wife when she come to your husband, she change everything. Number one, she changes in it. Number two, she follow the husband. So you, you could see what wife do is what Christians need to do to Jesus. So I'm not surprised why in our churches there are many ladies than men. Because, because wives, they know how to submit. If you need to be too much spiritual, be a wife. So if you need to be more spiritual, be a wife. Learn to be a wife. You'll be spiritual. If you find someone say, I married this man, but always I regret. If I can be given second chance, I won't be with this person. So here, it shows that a wife can change a husband to be what she believes she want her husband to be. Listen, by submission, you can change people around. By submission, you can make many people to be repent. Do you know that why we don't, I was seeing this thing, some people, when you speak with them, the, the Bible, when you speak with them, the reason why they can't change it's, because, it's not because of them. It's, it's because of us. We began to show them we know too much. They will show us. We began to prove that we know too much. But the Bible says that we are more than conquerors. But with submission, submission brings the character. The character is shown by the works. So, already when you are submitting, we need to see works. So, a right wife, through her works, she will prove to her husband that she is there for him. A real Christian who wants to go to heaven must learn the character of a wife. If not, that Christian will never reach her. Because a wife always submits to her husband. There, there are things that wives can say in front of children. You know, when you're not a Christian, you just explode. You know? But submission teaches you a character. Submission teaches you a character. You need to submit to extend that people around you say you are stupid. If they have not reached that level where they can say you are stupid, you are not submitting. For you to be lifted up, humbling yourself, you will be lifted up. I don't know if you are hearing me. If you want God to raise you up, humble yourself, you will be lifted up. Are you submitting? You know, I've been learning some things from my wife. 
Some people say my wife is a very bad person. She controls me. But to be honest, I always learn. Even when she sees that maybe what I'm speaking is not going right. She won't tell me now. She won't cut me when I'm talking. Many people who know me, if they come and sit with me, my wife won't talk until I say talk. So submission, us. It makes us to hear God more. And act better. Can you see now yourself, you'll be calling, your husband is still talking, you're interfering. Same applies when you are before God. When you start speaking, you are talking. Same applies that when God says, turn this side, you are talking to your own direction. direction. The reason why people can't hear God, they are talking too much. Tell your neighbor, the reason why you can't hear God, you are talking too much. You are lacking submission. Submission teaches you to hear. You will be permitted to talk. You are not talking fallacy. You are not talking untrue things. You are talking with perfection. In completeness. I don't know if you are hearing me. I also say my friend. Do you know why people are no longer listening to you? You, you talk when you are not invited. You are not invited. Submission tells you this is not the time to talk. It tells you until you have a right character. Before you talk, you have a right character. Before you talk, you have a right Before you talk, already somebody is talking. Has not even asked you a question. Already you are answering. You are going to come out. Go inside and come out. That is why even the prayer a Christian who fear God who submit to God cannot just kneel down and begin to talk. A Christian who submit to God when he kneels down he, he becomes quiet for a long time. He becomes Quiet for him and search for himself. And the Holy Spirit will guide him what to say. Submission teaches us what to say. It guides us to the completeness of God. There are many Christians who are listening to me today. God will guide you in Jesus' name. If we read John 1, John chapter 1, Verse 19 to 30. Verse 19 to 30. You know, I was learning this. I was very much touched. About the submission of John. If you want to see also, you can also read chapter 2 from verse 1. chapter 1, or Luke chapter 2. So I want to tell you that if you can see Jesus, you see John, John. You see their submission is amazing. On John, which one? We found that when John was busy baptizing, when all eyes are on him. Everybody was just saying, this man is more than a prophet. He began to speak about someone. I said, there is someone who's better than me. John was not just saying this. He realized the people's eyes are on him now. We read that we found that people were beginning to say he's a prophet. 
Even the disciples of Jesus, they knew him as a prophet. But Jesus declared him as more than a prophet. The Bible says, he said, there is someone among us. That man is better than me. You know, if we reach a level whereby, we understand that there are people who are better than others. You will humble yourself and learn from others. John here proved what is submission. And even when Jesus came to be baptized by him, he was denying. He was just saying, sorry, I can't do that. Already I got revelation about you. And you know, that's where Jesus said, no, this must happen because we need to fulfill scriptures. I believe there's someone better than me here. Submission teaches us to be humble. Any praise of man brings pride. Tell them, any praise of man brings pride. But any praise from God brings upliftment. If you want to be lifted by God, don't allow any man to praise you. Humble yourself. Submit. Even if there are many things you know, just keep quiet and allow God to do it. Because God is in control. He's watching over you. Today you have come here. Can I tell you this? Out of your submission, I'm here to announce you that you'll be delivered. You'll be blessed. You will reach your destiny. If you believe, shout hallelujah. I know some people who took the best out of submission. Not because they are small, but they took the best. You can be the best not because of what people are saying but what because of what God is saying. I don't know if you hear me. I, I say I declare you the best. I say you will take the best today. If you believe, shout hallelujah. There's something that I wanted to look at which it's happening nowadays in Hebrews 13, verse 17. By Hebrews 13, 17. That's where maybe we can stop there. Obey your spiritual leaders and submit to them, recognizing their authority over you. For they are keeping watch over your souls and continually guarding your spiritual welfare as those who will give an account of their stewardship of you. Let them do this with joy and not with grief and groans, for this will be of no benefit to you. There's a, a benefit of submission. If you can see the Bible says, obey your spiritual fathers. Or spiritual parents. Or people who are older than you. There are benefits. They guard over your soul. You know, this scripture, I've been checking it several times. There's another one that says, uh, respect your parents. Or honor them so that you live long. And I found it's the same thing. You know, for you to be longer on what you're doing, you need to listen to them and respect them. One of our problems today is our churches when they are small they are small we began to defy our spiritual fathers. Mothers. 
when our parents in the Lord, when the church looks small, we divide those churches. Many churches today we build on top of the foundation of another. Because spiritual children never respect their parents. Just read Job 22. I found what submission can do. Just write that. Job 22. From verse 23. Verse 22 from 23. Alright. If you return to the Almighty. Is verse 23. And submit. You will be built up. Or you will be restored. If you remove unrighteousness far from your tents and place your gold in the dust and the gold of Opir among the stones of the brooks or considering it of little value and make the Almighty your gold. And your precious silver. Then you will have delight in the Almighty. And you will lift up your face to God. You will pray to Him. And He will hear you. Listen to this. If you want to be heard, heard by God. When you pray. Be stupid of God. Sometimes when you're humbling yourself, submitting to your parents in the Lord, you are like stupid. You are not. When you pray, God hears you. Can you see that verse again? Look at verse 26. Then you have delight in the Almighty and you will lift up your face to God you will pray to him and he will hear you look at the, the, and you pay your vows 28 is what I want you to look at you will also decide and decree a thing and it will be established and for you can you see that verse 28 you will decide you take decision of something and then from there when you decree it you will see it established ok look at verse uh, 29 when you are cast 29. down and humbled, you will speak with confidence and the humble person he will lift you up and say that he will even rescue the one for whom you intercede who is not innocent and you will be rescued through the cleanness of your hands you will save a person who is not innocent Listen, submission makes God to hear you. When you decree, it will be established. Let's look at verse 28 again. I want us to practice it today. Look at 28. Just read it aloud in your Bible. You will also decide and decree a thing and it will be established for you and the light of God's favor uh -huh. will shine upon your ways. Listen, here it says, it's not talking about prophecy here. You will think. When you think, even the decision you are making, it will be established. It's not like, you know, a prophecy you need a prophet to tell you. Here God is looking at your thoughts. And establish them. Can you read that verse 28 again? Read it again. You say what? You will also decide and decree a thing. Uh -huh. And it will be established for you. And the light of God's favor will shine upon your ways. You will decide. 
o tlo nna ga ni shisha wa just secret wa bolela ka silo and se tlo pham 